it's Jen Gallagher and today I'm here with another Jelly Bean Soup tutorial. Today we're going to use the Spoonful of Silk Collection to create a grid layout. So we're starting with this charming flower print. It has these beautiful little flowers and then on the other side it has the houses. Then I'm going to place a 11 by 11 inch square of white cardstock on top of that. right in the center there using the design of the flowers as a guide. Now we have these bite-sized bits paper and what it has on there is it has all these awesome little cut apart pieces and I am going to concentrate on the larger pieces today and I'm going to create a grid. Now I am also going to use pattern paper. It has the umbrellas on one side and it has this awesome kind of brownish tan houndstooth on the back. And we're going to do a nine grid. That means nine pieces. So I've pre-cut all of my squares. And before adhering anything, I always like to kind of get the placement right. If you are very particular, you could always measure and use a pencil, but I eyeball a lot of things. So this is the basic grid that I'm going with, and a couple of things that I want to point out is that you'll notice that I have three of the houndstooth, and then to mix it up, I'm using a pattern paper that is the back of one of these cut apart pieces. It's this beautiful blue floral. That is one way to kind of break up the grid and keep it more interesting. I try not to have like shapes together. So you can see down here, I have a rounded wreath shape here and the embroidery hoop up here. And then the other thing I try and think about is color. And so you can see my color line kind of runs through here. So just some things to think about. What I would do is cut out all your pieces and then kind of move them around until you get the placement how you like. So once I've decided on my grid, then I can come back with my adhesive and I start with one row and I try not to stick it down too hard. So I am using a permanent adhesive, but I just don't quite stick it down all the way quite yet. And I'll show you what I mean. So once I get the distance between the edges and the bottoms, then I can come back and I can adjust really quickly as needed straighten and then I'll come back in and kind of buff it so that it stays down and then we can build the rest of our layout. So to pick out these additional squares I simply measured the larger squares and then cut out the same size squares for these three houndstooth pieces. That means my grid is all the same size. Now you don't have to do this you could do a grid with different sizes. The grid doesn't have to be perfect so it's just up to you. I use the tribe square in the middle because I really love how it's darker inside and I feel like the eye goes right into the center of the layout. That's why that got placed right there. So keep your distances the same between each card. And again, adjust as needed. But after doing this a few times, you kind of Get a feel for how it goes. Again, if you'd rather measure and do it that way, go for it. All right, to the center of the houndstooth pieces, I knew that I wanted photos. So I print my photos at home and I just cut them out on my photo paper so they keep that white edge. And I measured them slightly smaller than the squares. And I wanted to leave just enough of the houndstooth kind of popping out behind. And you can see that this is one photo shoot and she, my daughter, has a couple of different facial expressions which makes it a little bit more interesting. All right, so once I have my grid, I like to start adding some different elements to the grid. The first thing we're going to add is one of the peapod parts. It's a little tab that says favorite. And this is where we start to add a little bit of dimension to our project. Now, this particular embroidery hoop has a bunch of little flowers, so I'm going to add some additional ones, even though it's very subtle and almost hard to see. When someone is thumbing through your album, you're going to see these extra little pieces here. 
And then I have two of the cut aparts. This is a cut apart piece that says, don't count the days, make the days count. And then this is actually a peapod part. And what I like to do is I will take a box of foam stickers. Squares or circles work great. And then just on the back, I'll just do, depending on how long it is, two or three or more if necessary. And we'll put that one across the entire card. And then this one we're going to do flat. I like to mix up what is flat and what is not. So just make sure you can still read that piece. To the top of the tribe square, I have a peapod part. It's this charming little yellow bird. Pull off any extra little paper there. Then to the little lemons down here, I thought it would be fun to add a little pink peapod heart. So again, I pull everything out and I start layering and kind of mixing things around. So the love my tribe is darling, but I noticed that this uh, peapod part that is a quote about friends fits perfectly inside it. So I add foam dots to the back of it. And then I'll make sure that it's centered and that the phrase runs perfectly. And then just like we did before with the embroidery hoop where we added extra flowers, we're going to bring in some slightly bigger flowers. And I'm gonna pop dot these, just kind of behind that sign. So all of a sudden things are on top and below and it just is so much more interesting. So you can see just some elements that get added. All right, so this final square I have reserved for my journaling. I am going to start with this beautiful kind of daisy flower. I love the florals in this collection and all the sweet elements, very Scandinavian. And one thing I want to point out is it is okay for your elements to come off the grid. It's actually more interesting that way if you do that. And then we will add this The Story tab. We'll add it right here, just to bring some more of that pink. And then my journaling I have printed just on some craft cardstock. It's a light craft. And then I've cut it into paper strips. And the craft color kind of reminded me of this light tan. So I'm going to slightly overlap these on and off the grid. And I try to cut them to different widths. I keep the heights the same, but the widths change. So this strip is a little longer than this strip here. Just one of my secret tips. So again, some go this way and some go this way. And then to finish it off, one thing I love about the Spoonful of Soul collection is that you get two sheets of the epoxy stickers. And you can see there are hearts and there are circles. And I love that. And it's so hard to choose sometimes which colors to use. But I love creating little grids of epoxy pieces. And there's nothing that says they have to be the exact same color. So we'll do the green up here and the pink down below. All right, so here we've put together a spoonful of soul paper project or layout rather. And we did it by using some of the bite-sized bit large square pieces. Look for these particular pattern papers in all of the collections. Some have tags, some have squares, some have word tags, phrases, but it is a great way to add dimension to your page. So pick out the larger pieces, build your grid, add in photos, then bring in some of the peapod parts, pop dot some of them, and then finish up with some texture with the epoxy stickers. So thank you for joining me for today's tutorial. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website and blog for additional inspiration.